live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2019. Brought to you by Informatica. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World 2019 here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. We are joined by Anil Chakravarthy. He is the Chief Executive Officer at Informatica. Thank you so much for returning to theCUBE. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me back on your uh, show here. So, on the main stage this morning, you, you made this, uh, this you, you said that AI and ML need data, mm -hmm. but data needs MI, ML and AI. That's can, right. Can you, can you just elaborate on that, riff on that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, you know, if you look at uh, AI and ML, hot topic obviously, every company is trying to take advantage of uh, new machine learning AI technologies. The, one of the key components of making that happen is the availability of the right data. Because you have to train these machine learning algorithms, the data scientists have to be able to find the right data, and then they have to prepare the right data, make sure that they have access to the data, clean it up, and then put it into, the, uh, uh, into their AI models, into the AI algorithms, and so on. Because the training of the algorithms is very sensitive to the quality of the data. It's really, really garbage in, garbage out. If you don't feed it the right data, the results will be skewed. And so that's the uh, key part of what we mean by when we say AI machine learning needs data. The flip side is, is what we do and help customers, which is, which is manage their vast complexity and scale of data. If you look at customers, petabytes of data, thousands of databases, hundreds of thousands of tables. So how do they manage all of that data? Because the management of data is not just about availability of data or the performance of those systems and so on. All that is super important, but it's also the security of the data, the governance of the data, the availability of the data to the right users at the right time. Trying to do all that manually, you just can't keep up. And that's where you need machine learning and AI to be able to do that for you in an automated manner. Anil, we've tried in the past, multiple years ago, every year it's the same story, you guys had on the right wave data. Everyone's now talking about what you were talking about four years yep. ago. You're continuing to talk about it and adding to it. You also talk about being the, the Switzerland, the neutral third party, because data needs to connect around from right. multiple sources. You had a lot of industry players up on stage today. How is that going? How are you continuing to be that role in the industry as more and more people come in? What's this say about the momentum and for Informatica's strategy? Yeah, I think uh, it's really because of what customers really want. Right? Take any customer, any enterprise customer, government customer of any scale, they're usually using a lot of different both on-premise and cloud technology offerings. So it could be multiple software as a service offerings, multiple maybe public clouds where they're running it as platform as a service, a lot of different on-premise uh, offerings, et cetera. Which means that all of those offerings that they're using have a data footprint. And from a customer's perspective, if they're using different tools to manage the data for each one of those, well they have all the problems they've always had data inconsistency, inability to manage it, and just who's going to learn if you're a data administrator, are you going to learn four or five different tools to manage it? So that is not really going to work. So that's where customers are demanding, hey, I need a data management platform that can help me manage the data consistently, and that's where we come in. That's what helps us be the Switzerland of data. So data feeds machine learning, machine learning powers AI. This is the formula you guys talk about all the time, no data, no AI, but if data is constrained, uh, from either infrastructure legacy or regulation that's going to slow the feeder yeah. <laughs> concept down or maybe incomplete data. And this is really about operationalizing AI. So this is, you've got to solve that data problem first if you want to scale up operations around AI. What's the state of the art from Informatica? What are you guys doing in this area and where's the, the customer's progress in this new operationalizing of AI with data at the heart of it? Yeah, so from an operationalization perspective, what you need is, first of all, help your data scientists and others using AI to find the right data. And finding the right data, you do it through the catalog, for example. It'll tell you what data you can access and then what's the metadata around the data. What, data, what you can use the data for. So maybe there's some data that you say, look, we have the data set, but we don't have the customer's opt-in to use that data. Fine, you can't, you can't use the data. So that's the first, first step, finding the right data. Then getting access to that data, that's what you get through data integration, the cloud tools, big data tools, et cetera. Then you prepare the data. We have a number of tools to prepare the data to make sure that the AI and machine learning models can use them well. Then you feed the data, 
you run it, you get your results, but then the explainability is a big deal. Whether it's regulators or even your own internal executives. They say, oh, that's the result of, the, of running the AI model, but how did it, how did it come to that decision? You know, for instance, in, in, uh, in financial services, we're using AI to do, let's say, a, a decision on who gets to get a loan or not. Well, you got to make sure that there is no bias in that, right? And so in order to explain the results, you need to know where the source data came from, and that's what we do as well through our governance and lineage. Well, we love talking about SaaS success. So you look at the cloud native, born in the cloud, great examples of how data has really been driving the new generation of innovation. The more enterprises we talk to around digital transformation, the more we hear we want to be consumer-like yeah. with a SaaS, whether it's an app for banking or an, an IoT app or anything. So SaaS is kind of, and you need data for that. How should an enterprise architect that solution? Because it's harder when you don't have clean, one cloud native. So you have to bring in some cloud, you got to bring in the on-premise. Where does the data sit in all of this? How do you architect the data on-premise, in the cloud, or in general, so that the customers have a really roadmap to a SaaS solution? No, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. You know, what you see right now is the focus on building a true customer data platform. We obviously just acquired a company all side that helps build, uh, get insights out of a customer data platform. The way we think of it at Informatica is, you have a customer data platform where then the last mile of how you reach the customer keeps changing and evolving. You know, that last mile could be through a call center, it could be through a web application. It could be through a mobile app. It could be through a salesperson who is reaching the customer in, with a live interaction. It could be a lot of different ones and it could be all of them. That's the, where the omni-channel comes in. The uh, way to do what you are asking for, John, is to truly focus on building a customer data platform that can support multiple kinds of last mile when it comes to actually interacting with the customer. That's how you ensure a very good consistent customer experience, and then you take advantage of whatever are the latest technologies. Tomorrow, like we were just talking about here, if there is AI-enabled bots or something else that's a better way of interacting with the customer, you're still working off of the same consistent customer data platform. That's how we see it. I want to ask you about the skills gap. We, yeah. we, we know that there are, there's a great demand for people who are uh, data scientists, experts in, in cloud and analytics, and yet there, is so, there are so few qualified candidates. That's right. I want to hear your thoughts about it and then also what Informatica is doing to make sure you are recruiting and retaining the right employees. Yeah, I think uh, one, I completely agree with you on the skills gap and obviously that's also a great opportunity as well because in reality, a lot of the younger folks who are looking at what uh, careers they want to pursue with uh, the right mindset and the right training, this, these would be great careers for them. And this also, the other great thing about this is, this is across the country and across the world, so you don't have to be in a specific location uh, to have a successful career as a data scientist or as a data steward, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I think from a uh, training perspective, we are actually working with a number of different universities. We actually started working with Indiana University to build a curriculum that can then be available online, available to a lot of different folks. We obviously work with a lot of different system integrators and consulting partners who hire hundreds of thousands of people and they are starting to build some very, very large practices around data science. That's another avenue for career growth there. And last, we're also starting at a much younger age. You know, I think last year we yeah. talked about the Next 25 program and uh, tomorrow when Sally is back on stage, you will see an update on the Next 25 program. Yeah. We're trying to get kids at the middle school level interested in this as a career. Anil, real quick on the follow-up on that is what curriculum specifically do you see in high demand? Is it, is it machine learning? Is it analytics? Is it um, cognitive? What specific uh, skills that, that you see in demand uh, and for folks to start thinking about? I think what uh, my advice to folks, in fact, my daughter is a freshman in college too and I've been giving her the same advice because I think this is a great play way to go, is when you think of skills development, first think of a broad platform that will give you the right skills regardless of the changes in technology because technology will keep changing. So what is that broad platform? The broad platform is, I think you need a ba background in statistics, you need a background in computer modeling and programming, and you need a, a broad platform in overall math. And again, I don't need, mean to scare anybody of it, it's not calculus level math, but it's math that helps you understand concepts, et cetera. That's the broad foundation you need. 
And then you have a number of different new technologies, whether it's Python, whether it's MATLAB. There are a lot of different ways of approaching and doing data science. But then, once you have the foundation, it's easy to pick this up. And the rest of it, just like in any other job, once you start doing it, you're going to pick up the rest of it and you'll become an expert there. Great, Emil Chakravarti, thank you so much for coming, for coming back to theCUBE. Perfect, thank you so much for having yeah, me. Thanks for having us. Thank you. You are watching theCUBE Informatica 2019. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. Stay tuned.